Okay, so uh, we, de we decided to do this little series of, you know, if I was to die tonight, what would I want the last sermon to be? And uh, I knew what I wanted to preach on with passage and everything, but then I went, wait, I don't want to die tonight. I I'd like to come back and do a couple more. You know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping the Lord hears me. Um, I'm going to preach until this Bible falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> About a week. <laughs> About a week. Um, so, our passage uh, today, and if you have a Bible, I'd love you to turn to it, is uh, in Deuteronomy 30. And uh, Moses has led the people through the wilderness for years and decades, and all the twists and turns and ups and downs and uh, cantankerousness of the people, all that stuff. And now they've come... Uh, to the edge of going into the promised land that they've been dreaming about, traveling towards, wishing for. Um, and uh, this is Moses' last um, <coughs> talk with them before he uh, turns them loose. Uh, and, and in the middle of this talk, it's, it's a great one to read in Deuteronomy, but um, in uh, verse 11 of chapter 30. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you. You can do this. It's not too difficult for you, nor is it beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven so that you have to ask, who will ascend to heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we can obey it? Doesn't that be a special thing? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get to it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, the word is very near to you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, decrees, laws, and then you will live. And you'll increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you're entering. But if your heart turns away and you're not obedient, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, well, I declare to you this day that you'll certainly be destroyed. You'll not live long in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day, I call heaven and earth as witnesses that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life. Choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God Listen to his voice, hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life, and he'll give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, Lord, teach us from this. Teach us from this uh, challenge, and help us to choose you and to choose life. Amen. Well, um, I love this passage. I, I love it because sometimes people get an idea when it comes to spiritual things that, you know, it, ha it takes somebody special or a guru or you have to have, be really smart, you have to have this knowledge or, or yeah, everything is way out there and in in that we can't really access it. And, and Moses is saying, oh no, this is simple. This is simple. It doesn't take any special talent, ability. It doesn't take it. Just make the right choice. And, uh, and God is going to bless you. Now, um, I found that over the years in, um, in counseling, uh, the 23 years I was in counseling uh, with my wife, um, trying to see if we were going to stay married. And, uh, and then probably 35 years of being the counselor, it's amazing how many people, as they find themselves getting into unhealthy situations, <clears throat> believe that they have no choice. All their choices, they, they, there's no, nothing they can do. Everything is focused down and, and they're powerless. And, and one, of the, one of the goals in therapy, um, is to help people realize that they have choices. Help them see that. And they may not always be the greatest choices in the world, but there are some choices and there are some options. And, and, and when we realize there's options, 
we begin to feel strength and we begin to feel uh, value and that we're not just a cog in the wheel but something can happen because of the choices we make. Now that's not uh, basic Christianity, that's just basic psychology. And, and, um, and if you want theology, there's always this tension in the Bible that uh, we've debated this for so long, I don't even care anymore. But you know, some people, there's the predestination. Uh, you have no choice that, that God has foreordained this and, and you're just going to experience it. It's kind of like karma, you know. Um, and then there's those who believe in free will. And, no, no, life is all choices. We've got all these choices and God doesn't even enter into it. And uh, that's been the base line. I'm not even going in there. But then love songs also got into the debate. Love songs. Like um, I was thinking this morning, I, Jonathan and I were talking about this. We, I thought it was Peaches and Herb <laughs> singing this, uh, but he did remind me that, um, who was it? Uh, the, um, Donnie and Marie. Donna and Marie Osmond <coughs> did a cover of this. Okay, anyway, but here, think of the theology in this. I'm leaving it all up to you. You decide what you're going to do. That's kind of what Moses is saying here. But the music, I can't believe Donnie and Marie sang that. Thank you. He came out of Deuteronomy 30. Um, <laughs> in the Bible, uh, Elijah, the prophet, comes to this big uh, moment of confrontation. Uh, the people and the, and the evil king and the, the king's priest to the um, uh, fertility god Baal and, and he makes this challenge to the people and he says choose this day who uh, you'll serve if the Lord is God follow him if Baal is God follow him and said, how long will you hobble between two opinions Make a choice. And then the, the next verse is, and the people said nothing. <laughs> Even secular films, and this is not a film I'm going to recommend to you. I'm not recommending it to you on the video <laughs> audience either. Um, but I was shocked to find out that um, even the most secular, horrible films uh, <laughs> deal with this. Um, train spotting. Now, I was going to show you this clip from Train Spotting, except for two things. Uh, one, there's F bombs every two words. <laughs> so that was, I thought, well, we can't probably do that. And then the other one is um, Scottish. And uh, they're speaking, they're from Glasgow, so they're speaking this Glaswegian accent that even the Scots don't understand. And so it's virtually unintelligible. So let me read to you what they were saying. Minus the F bombs and minus the Glaswegian accent, okay? Choose life. Choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a big television, choose washing machines, cars, compact disc players, and electrical tin can openers. Choose good health, low cholesterol, and dental insurance. Choose fixed interest mortgage payments. Choose a starter home. Choose your friends. Choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose a group of rental furniture and a range of fabrics. Choose do-it-yourself projects and wondering who you are on a Sunday morning. Choose sitting on that couch watching mind-numbing, spirit-crushing game shows, stuffing junk food into your mouth. Choose rotting away at the end of it all. Nothing more than an embarrassment to your selfish brats who spawned to replace yourself. There were several F bombs in that sentence. <laughs> Choose your future. Choose life. But why would I want to do a thing like that? I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And the reasons? There are no reasons. Well, if the pagan train spotting crew can deal with this. This is exactly what Moses was talking about. You've got some choices. I've got some choices. And how we choose is going to make a huge difference going forward. I think our lives are, are shaped by the choices that we make. Right? That's, that's not hard to grasp. Also, they're shaped by the choices that we don't make. 
Because not making a choice is a choice, right? Just as the people did with Elijah, just they responded not a word. That's a choice. Now, there's a few principles I want to put down here. The first one is, this is not too difficult for us. This is not a challenge that you go, wow, I'm going to have to really get in shape spiritually. i got to go to the spiritual gym and work out to, before I can handle this. This isn't a, the equivalent of a, of a, a spiritual marathon you have to run. Um, this is doable for every single one of us with our own issues, with our own complications in our life, with our own relational struggles, with our own financial struggles, career struggles, uh, with all the things that we carry, health problems, all of that, it doesn't matter because this is within reach of all of us. This is something every single one of us can do. And the other thing about this is, according to scripture, what you choose matters. It's not just a case of, um, well, this is you know, one more thing I'm gonna have to decide in my life. There, there's consequences based on what you choose. Um, what does he say here? Um, <clears throat> command you today to love the Lord your God, walk in his ways. You'll live, you'll increase, you'll be blessed. But if your heart turns away and you're not obedient, if you're drawn away to other gods, you'll certainly be destroyed. That's pretty clear consequences, isn't it? You know what the problem is? When you make that decision, you don't experience the blessing or the destruction. Isn't that weird? Because you think, okay, I'm going to make my choice. Okay, like uh, the guy in train spotting. Um, I do not choose life. I have no reason, but I just don't choose life. And was his life any different than the person who chose life at that moment? No. Sometimes you think, well, if I, if I, you know, I, I prayed and I accepted Jesus into my life. And for the next two days, I didn't feel any big blessing. I didn't get a lot of stuff rolling in. I didn't feel like all my problems went away. I'm pretty much the same guy. Two days later, maybe there's nothing to this. Or I decided to walk away. Uh, give the finger to God and go my own way. I chose not life. And I didn't die. Lightning didn't hit me. Yet. But uh, so some people think, well, if it doesn't happen instantly, I don't know if it's valid. But the thing I want you to know is from the scripture is that there are consequences, they're sure, they're predictable, and they'll come in time. Now the third thing. Now, last week we talked about the, the people who are really good at closure, they can finish things, they get stuff done, you know. They, um, and then there's people like me who don't, and they leave everything open and never, never have closure. Um, and we have those different personalities. That's not spiritual value, that's just personality things that work for us. But because I'm a person who leaves the options open, I sort of have a built-in bias, a built-in prejudice, that what I'd like to do is wait till I'm in the middle of something and then I'll decide. I'll see how it goes. So I'm not gonna make a commitment up front that may shape the rest of my life. Instead, I'm gonna just kinda go my way and uh, hopefully I'll choose well down the road. You know what? As a person who does that quite a bit, I gotta tell you, that strategy sucks. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. Uh, <coughs> it really doesn't work. 
Now, I'm not going to change and become a person who gets stuff done, but the, <laughs> but the reality is, and I know this as someone who doesn't naturally go to it, the reality is that we need to make choices first. We need to make our choices first because that changes the experience we have down the road. When I say, well, I'm going to leave my options open, Lord, I'm, just, I'm not going to, I, I'll just, you know what I'm going to do? You know, it's like, it's like the parents that say, I'm going to not tell my kids anything about the Lord, and then I'll let them make their own decision in total ignorance. You know, uh, you know so I could say, I'm going to just wait. See, you know, maybe what I should do, what I really like to do is live my life on my own terms. I like to, you know, just all the destruction that comes with it. I just want to pile up the mountain of destruction around me. And then on my deathbed, hey, Lord, how about me? And I'm okay. Wouldn't that be cool? And then the bus hits me. I missed it. But what happens if we make our choice first? What happens if we decide today what direction our life is going? Now there'll still be choices along the way. There'll still be decisions to make. There'll be all those things. But if we, if we make a decision, our direction's set, <coughs> right? In John chapter 11, um, Jesus, uh, his, come, his, his good friend Lazarus has died. Uh, he comes late uh, to grieving sisters, and they're, they're angry, and all those things, they're disappointed in them, and uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, I'm the life, whoever believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. What's he saying there? He's saying that when we, when we choose life, when we put our trust in him, we have a gift of eternal life. And whether we die today, tomorrow, physically, or everything, we're still going to live. Our eternal life starts now with that choice. And it, and it continues. It's not like, well, we have our physical life, and then I'm going to have my eternal life after I die if all things go well, and I don't choose poorly. No, it's the same. It's one, one continuum. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Whoever believes in me and dies will live. It's all one. You know, it's interesting that Lazarus was alive, then he died, and then Jesus brought him back from there. Remember the big miracle Lazarus come forth, and the sister said, uh, when Jesus said, would you go unwrap him? And, and, the, and the sister said, but Lord, my brother stinketh. <laughs> That's a King James. But, uh, you know, uh, my brother stinketh. I'm not going near him. You'd think she'd be happy that he was back from the dead. But no, it wasn't tidy. You know. How many times has my sister thought my brother stinking? <laughs> you know, that's a whole other thing. But um, you know what happened a few years later? Lazarus died. That's what happened. So was Jesus a failure? Did he blow it? Was it all? Did he, did he not understand what's going on here? Lazarus went through that whole thing and died again. Except, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Even if they die, they'll live. And if they live and believe in me, they're... It's the same. Now, when you have a choice, and I've struggled with this a lot in my life, that's why I picked it as my last sermon, okay, y'all? I know it's not a funny one, but it, it's... Um, <laughs> I have this kind of rebellious spirit in me. I know you, it's hard for you to believe, but I, I want my choices. I want, I want choices. I don't want anybody deciding for me. Um, 
I'd rather decide wrong than have you decide right for me. You know, it's that it's the independent streak I have, you know. The Lord's not finished with me. That was last week's sermon, so don't worry. He'll be still working with me. But um, I tend to really overthink decisions and choices. Some people just make them. You know? Like you go to a restaurant. I, I've been with friends at a restaurant, and they, the, the wait person comes up and says, uh, are you ready to order? And I'm going, no. And they're going, sure, we're ready. No way. Wait. wait. I haven't read everything. I know what they want. You know, uh, Tuesday, we, we go to this place every Tuesday, Eileen and I, because she likes the hamburger. She's a vegetarian. <laughs> Tuesday, at a, uh, you know, Tuesdays, she has this hamburger because <laughs> she really likes it. <laughs> Sometimes we make them. Why am I speaking so softly now like no one will hear this? <laughs> So every Tuesday, we go in and she gets her hamburger. So we go in and the wait person comes up and greets us and says, would you like a little more time? And I go, yes, as she's going, I'll have the hamburger. <laughs> she knows what she wants, she knows why she wants. She makes that decision, boom. And then I go, and it drives Eileen crazy. She hates this, I, she's not here so I can say this. She hates this. <laughs> I always say, so what's good? <laughs> you know, what's good? And the weight person usually says, well, everybody has different tastes. No, no, I want to know what's good. And then they tell me, and then I go, no, I, I don't want that. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes they'll say, you think this is your last meal. You always think this is your last meal. Every time you go to a restaurant, you think it's your last meal. You have to make the perfect choice. You can't make the wrong choice. And then sometimes the food comes, and I look at what someone else got, and I feel... Dismay. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have got that. You know, look at them. I usually am a little happy when they hate their lunch because that means that I chose better. <laughs> but I really have, I mean, it's hard for me to order in a restaurant. There's so many choices. I don't want. At the end. And so and so, I tend to overthink things, and I and I, uh, in my office, if you poke your head in, there's like a thousand books, and the, the, most of them are in boxes up in the attic. <laughs> Those of you who've been working up there uh, know that. Um, tons of books up there, and then of course the ones in the garage at home, and and I, I think I want to be right. I want my choices, my decisions, to be right. I don't want to make a mistake here. Anybody here ever have that? Where you really, you overthink them? What a mess it makes of my life. Because, for example, accepting Christ is not, uh, it's not a theological decision. It's not even a religious decision. It's not a concept. Uh, I'm going to embrace the concept of the Christ spirit within us. Well, that's not it. <laughs> um, I had a friend who always used to talk about this like a, a marriage proposal. And uh, I didn't do that very well, so I didn't really relate to it at the time. But um, so, you know, you know, John, if you're, if you're um, going to propose to Eileen, and so you say, Eileen, I love you. I want to spend my life with you. I want us to grow old together. Uh, I want to know you. I want you to know me. I want, I want us to go through everything. I love, will you marry me? And she goes, I, I believe that. I go, well, I don't care if you believe that. Uh, will you marry me? I think that's true. I do think I believe that. Will you marry me? I think the way you phrased it is appropriate for this situation. <laughs> <laughs> you have the proper nuance, sentence structure. I, I, I find that admirable. <laughs> 
will you marry me? At some point, she's going to have to say yes or no. Right? And that's what happens with us and Jesus. It's not a matter of, oh, I believe these things. I believe his teachings. I, I find that uh, there's comfort in his words. I find, you know, it, it's none of that. It's yes or no. Because it's the, it's the, it's the beginning and the, and the choosing to live in a relationship with Christ. That's not... Uh, not based on how much we know or anything. It's based on the fact that we've said yes to Jesus. He says, I love you. I made you. I know you. I call you by name. Will you get out of your boat and will you follow me? Lord, I believe ontologically in your words. I know, but will you get out of your boat and follow me? So at some point, we're going to have to say yes or no. And when we say yes... We enter into a new life. Now the interesting thing, and I shouldn't tell you this, okay? I really shouldn't tell you this. But I will. What happens if we choose bad? What if we choose poorly? What if we make a stupid, using the uh, words from train spotting, what if we make that kind of decision? Does Jesus just leave us, walk away, and say, well, forget you then. i got work to do. What, what happens? No. Guess what? Next time we're in something, he comes to us and he says, hey, John, I love you. I know you. I call you by name. Will you trust me now? Will you let, will you let me live in you? Will you start a relationship with me now? No, but I, I said, no. I know, but will you now? Because I still love you. That's amazing. That actually is grace. That even when we choose poorly, Jesus still comes and says, I love you. I want, I want you to walk with me. You got a choice. Why did I pick this strange passage for my last sermon? Why did I do that? Because I believe Jesus loves us so much that he wants us to choose freely with open heart and open mind and open eyes. Say, Lord, I choose life. Come into my life. Make me new. Make me a, a great healing, great forgiveness. There's a whole need for that. Help me. In the places I can't love, help me love. I find it difficult to certain people, you know, Lord, you love them through me. I, I can't do that very well, but you can and we're in this together, right? If there's one thing I want us to do, and it may be the only thing, choose life. You don't have to. You can hold out for other options, better options maybe down the road. You don't have to. You can, uh, you can ask the waiter what, what is better to do. Mm -hmm. You can ask him. You can leave this church and go to a church. We throw a rock at 15 churches in Utah, around here. And you, you can go to every one of them and say, well, let me think about this again. Doesn't matter. But I'm saying, choose life. Because it makes all the difference. So, pray with the Lord Jesus. For the first time, for the hundredth time, Lord, come into our lives. Come into our hearts and minds and relationships and work and confusion and frustration and all the things that we have going inside, Lord. Come into that. Realize. And be our Lord. And be our friend. Be our Savior. 
And Lord, today we do choose life. And we ask for your blessing, for your protection, for your care, for your nurture, for your promises and scripture to come true in our life. And Lord, we ask that you give us the courage not to turn away. There's plenty of chances. Help us not to turn away. Help us to keep our eyes on you as we go forward. And help us to experience the eternal life that even death can't stop. Walk with us through that. We belong to you. You love us. And we're your grateful people. In Jesus' name, amen.